There's an unusual phenomenon that happens twice a year here at MIT, a celestial and architectural alignment known as MIT Henge. The name comes from Stonehenge in England. The way Stonehenge is laid out, its central axis points northeast. In fact, it's aligned with the spot on the northeastern horizon where the sun rises on the summer solstice. The people who built Stonehenge almost certainly planned that alignment. But many more happened by chance, like Manhattan Henge in New York, and similar alignments in other cities where the streets lie on a grid. Something similar happens twice a year here at MIT, when the setting sun lines up with the string of buildings along the northern edge of Killian Court, the so-called Infinite Corridor. That corridor runs 825 feet in length, just over 250 meters, running through buildings 7, 3, 10, 4, and 8. If the corridor were aligned perfectly east-west, the way it looks on this campus map, the setting sun would shine down the corridor on the equinoxes, roughly March 21st and September 21st. But if we look at a map with true north at the top, like this Google map, we see that the infinite corridor is tipped southwest to northeast. So the solar alignment happens in the winter, when the sun is further south in the sky. MIT Henge happens in the second week of November, and again in late January. For just a few days, light from the setting sun shines in through the windows of Building 7 and reaches all the way to Building 8. And in case you're wondering, there's no equivalent phenomenon with the rising sun. Other buildings to the east block sunlight from coming in from that direction. Last November, I had a look to see what MIT Henge was all about. It turns out that MIT Henge draws quite a crowd. Hey guys, about 16 minutes. The Infinite Corridor actually occurs on multiple floors, and they say that the best viewing is from the third floor. People cluster at the eastern end of the hallway to wait their turn for a glimpse of the sun. Sure enough, when the time came, sunlight did light up the full length of the Infinite Corridor. But I never did see the disk of the sun itself through the window at the far end. Well, you snooze, you lose. Maybe I would have had to have been sitting where that guy was with his video camera. Oh well, the photographer for the student newspaper got a good photo of it. I guess that will have to do as a souvenir. On the scale of astronomical excitement, where a total solar eclipse ranks a 10 and a lunar eclipse scores an 8, let's say it's a logarithmic scale, I'd say that MIT Henge scores about a 6. Still, if you're around MIT when it's happening, it is worth checking out.